We ready? Yep. We are here for part two on our second round of the dynamics and the capture of that extra suspension system. What? This is a rigid fat bike. Where's my suspension system? You've got suspension right in your tires, Calvin. Right in the squish. And it's the dynamics of the changes that really interest us. So we're bringing it to the trail. Bringing it to trails. We're gonna try out some different pressures in different situations. We're gonna try some rock gardens. We're gonna try some, you know, say jumping and landing at an angle. See exactly what happens. Mm -hmm. See how much tire pressure is lost in some weird situations. Right. We're gonna try some things out here in reality. Then we're gonna go back to our secret lab known as the Park Tool Factory. When you run over obstacles like rocks and ruts, your tires deflect and absorb some of the energy. The amount of deflection is determined by your tire pressure. Now, some deflection is great. It helps with traction and comfort. But when there's too much, the rim can bottom out, causing a puncture or possibly even damage to the rim. So where's the sweet spot? Let's start here. A typical Midwestern rock guard. Not much compared to the rest of the world, but this is what the glaciers left us. I did several runs with different tire pressures and recorded the results using a high-speed camera and the TireWiz system that we discussed in the last episode. First up, a nice firm 35 PSI. Well, first ride we did about 35 PSI and through this rock garden, limestone, it was very abrupt. It was bouncing around, it was spinning out, it was skidding. It couldn't get really, didn't really feel comfortable. The tire whiz data backs this up. We stayed within a range of 0.5 PSI during the entire ride. So we dropped the tire pressure and tried it again. Here's that same run at 16 PSI. Notice in the slow motion footage, the difference in how the tire conforms to the rocks and ruts. It contoured to the rocks a lot better. So, and it was a lot smoother, it didn't lose traction. At that low of a pressure, I am fairly certain that around a lot of these corners, I'd be rolling this tire. So I'm still apprehensive of that low of a tire pressure, but through these rock gardens, at the speeds we're going, it's pretty sweet. Let's take a peek at the tire whiz data from this clip. Despite the visible deformation in the tire, we only saw variations of up to 0.8 PSI, which still doesn't seem like much. But when there's only 16 PSI to begin with, a very small deviation like that is a greater effect on the tire. Now, obviously on most rides, we're gonna encounter more than just rocky terrain. So let's move over here to this small jump. I land at an angle just to test how resilient the pressure is to burping. After a couple tries, I got a burp. This was at 25 PSI. But looking at the tire whiz data, you can see the burp dropped us down to 20 PSI. On the next run, we did it again. And here you can actually see the tire fold over and the rim impacts the ground. This burp cost us another two PSI. So here we've got some sealant coming out, definite signs. What does this mean for our tire pressure? That <laughs> we, we need to bump it up a little bit to stay comfy. It means bump it up, Truman, or how about riding style, Mr. Stone, it's sideways. <laughs> or maybe some meteor tires with thicker sidewalls. That's right, it's all there and uh, having that data, that dynamic data, very useful here. Moving indoors, we needed a controllable method to apply pressure to the wheel and we found one in the Park Tool Warehouse using a pallet scale, a forklift, a custom fabricated rod, and the tire whiz. We secured the wheel underneath the forklift and added downward pressure in 100 pound increments until the wheel had bottomed out. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. This was pretty fun and only mildly dangerous. We tested wheels at 15, 25, and 35 PSI, measuring the change in PSI at each interval. The 15 PSI wheel required 600 pounds to bottom out, while the 25 PSI wheel took 1,000 pounds. And at 35 PSI, we went all the way up to 1,300 pounds before the tire gave in. More interestingly, the change in PSI from zero pounds to bottoming out was not actually that much. And as the initial pressure got higher, the change got smaller. But this was on flat ground, and trails are not flat. 
So we devised a steel root for the wheel to go over and repeated the test. These results were very different. 15 PSI and 25 PSI both bottomed out by the time we got to 300 pounds, and 35 PSI followed close behind at 500 pounds. There are still a lot of variables here, but it gave us some interesting insight into how different pressures perform under load. Let me get the tension meter here. We've done some testing out on the single track on our little mini rock garden. And we got a forklift out to just, to, just to, to smash that wheel down. That was kind of silly. You're never going to see that out in the, the real world, are you? It's actually really interesting. Those are, those are pressures that you will be seeing out in the real world. We passed this through some engineering people that Certified we know. Certified engineers and common sense tells us you're coming off that big jump and casing something. If you don't, if you land too flat, you are going to see that when you collapse that wheel. You are seeing those kind of pressures hitting the ground and it is going to change the tire pressure and we saw how it squished. Very useful uh, reference point just yeah. when it touched. Just when yeah. it touched. And also it was really interesting in these latest Dirt Diaries videos that came out. We noticed on multiple events Very good. there was burps coming out, there was sealant in the air. Another good tire conclusion from us. We think there's more burping going on than we like to admit. So yeah. mind your manners and watch the burping. Yeah. Yep. So Gross. the data and the collection of it, I think, is what's really important about this. Yeah, we, we need to capture data a little bit quicker than we're currently capturing it right. for this to be very, much more relevant. This is spitting out one pressure read per second. One per, it's not very fast. You're going down the trail, in one second, you're four, five maybe meters down the trail. What happened in between? There's so much that could happen in between. There could have been what we're going to call events. Mm -hmm. It's an event. Something happened. A bottom out. That would be an event that would show up in your data. You could right. pinpoint that point and it, your device should remember that event. We but want more reads, more reads. It's, it's sister, the sister product, the shock whiz. 100 data points per second. That's right. And the shock whiz does store it. This sends it here. This head unit, head units are the bottleneck here. So we want some more software writing. All of our good data geek friends, get on it. We want more capture here. Yeah. So again, comparing this to your, your heart rate monitors, uh, all your other your data, your mileage, your wattage, this is another way to help you think. And I know someone who's got a new bike. Yeah, I just got this, this bike's fresh build. Uh, kind of just threw it together. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, these, there's tire pressures, oh, right here that he should ride. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, right there, 60 PSI, that's what I should be running. That's, you know, maximum PSI. But it's, this has been really interesting for me, because I, this is my first 29er, hard to believe. I've had lots of 27.5, lots of 26s. World. Thanks, Modern World, for accepting me. I'm, uh, I'm happy to be here, but it's taken me a long time to get used to this. What's different? Different, the rim width is different. The rim material, my other bike has a much wider rim. It has their carbon. The tire casings are a little bit thicker and the tire pressure differences are crazy. So it's, it's really hard for me to get used to it. And then I'm mm -hmm. also getting used to a different wheel size, aluminum rims versus carbon rims. It's been a really interesting experience for me. So to help you think, data. And that's what I like about this thing. It helps your heart rate, knowing your heart rate, right? knowing your respiration. Having all of your weight, if you're training to be an athlete or just to have a good time, knowing that data can help you have a better time. Tire pressure and its changes and dynamics are certainly part of that. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. If you have any input or have any questions. If you want to let some pressure off, put them down in the notes. See you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy Tech Tuesdays, check out our Repair Help video library which has detailed guides to a wide variety of common bike maintenance procedures. And of course, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest videos from Park Tool.